Tempe Town Lake on Rio Salado is a culmination of more than three decades of planning and construction. Filled just five years ago, this area attracts more than two million visitors each year and injects more than $30 million into the city's economy. What makes this place so special is the story of Rio Salado is really the story of life in the desert. In 1966, a group of fifth-year architecture students at Arizona State University was challenged by the Dean of College of Architecture to create a plan that would combine flood control and environmental design. The purpose was to convert the Salt River from an urban scar to a major asset in the metropolitan area. Presented in public for the first time the following year, the students had a concept and a name, Rio Salado. With the threat of flooding outside the riverbank no longer a concern, Tempe leaders now focus their attention on the next phase of the Rio Salado, planning the recreation and economic development opportunities now available at the gateway to their city. We are talking about Cirque du Soleil. Testoon Lau is live at Westworld this morning to tell us more. And we'll call it a jaw-dropping show. Good You're morning. You're so colorful Good this morning, Good morning. Tess. I tell you, I was so excited when I found out that I was doing this live shot because I had just seen the show Saturday night. I even went out and bought my own Verakai shirt during the intermission. So call me a, an official Cirque du Soleil groupie. But I had so much fun. Verakai means wherever. And in the Romani uh, gypsy language, it actually means uh, wherever you, uh, wherever the wind takes you, that is your home. It's a beautiful saying. Also beautiful are these costumes. Not only are they bold, brilliant colors, but they're also very functional. The designer had to keep in mind that, you know, these performers will be doing wonderful acrobatic acts, and they, he had to really keep them in mind. Also, let me take you right over here. Back here is where they get ready. This is the makeup room. This is where the musicians get ready. We have an exciting treat for you later. We are going to show you the very first act of Cirque du Soleil Verakai. It is called Flight of Icarus, and you'll be in for a real treat. Be sure to join us a little bit. Let's toss it back out to Tess Dumlau. She is out at Cirque du Soleil having fun with some performers. You're the big fan. You said you've, you're about ready to join the circus. <laughs> you know, I probably belong in a circus. <laughs> we are here on stage at Cirque du Soleil. The stage is supposed to be the top of a volcano, and Anton Chelnikov is the lead uh, character in the whole program, and he told me a really interesting story. Now, you never thought about being anything else but an artist for Cirque du Soleil. If you're born in a circus family that your parents are both performers, you don't even think about becoming anything else. If you're starting to train since, since you are three years old, like I have, and uh, performing all my life now. And uh, the, the young life of 18? At 18 year old, I'm well, your performance, your act was just incredible. He is the first act in the performance, uh, in the show, and he falls from the sky and lands into an enchanted forest full of fantastic creatures, and that's where the show takes off. Take it away, Anton. Tess is out there live with some really great ideas to turn your own home into a model home. Hey, Tess. Hey, how you doing? Great. Well, if you have checked out any of the model homes here in the Valley in the last couple of years, chances are you have seen Camille's work. Well, for the first time ever, she's opened her doors at Camille's Collection, so you can get that professional help to give your home that model home look. Joining me now is Camille Matthews. There is a Camille. She says that's a common question. Hi, Tess. How are you? Hi. I did not know this was her corporate color, and I wore this. Uh, I didn't even get a memo, but that was kind of weird. <laughs> it's the new color spread it around the Valley. <laughs> Oh, I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The it Lord sounds and looks like a typical lunch at any old summer camp. But if you look closely, you can see some of these young campers marked with burn scars. And the most painful ones are the scars you can't see. For 10-year-old Danelle, her wounds are repeatedly cut open by other kids. What do you want people to know about you when you when you know they see you for the first time? And uh, I got burnt in a house fire, and they shouldn't make fun of me because it hurts. I already went through something painful, and I don't want to go through something like that again. Danielle and her twin brother Dylan were a year and a half when their house caught on fire. The two were trapped in their cribs. Both sustained life-threatening burns and underwent extensive treatments. Regardless of how each child was burned, every one of them depends on Camp Courage for emotional healing. When Camp Courage first started 14 years ago, there were about a dozen kids. Today, there are more than 100. It cost about $1,000 per child for a whole week's worth of fun. But what everyone gets out of it is priceless. They were sitting there talking to each other, 
and in front of me and another counselor and they were, let, they were just pouring their heart out to what happened, why they wish it didn't happen, what kind of surgeries they've had, what they've gone through, how people have treated them. And it was an amazing thing seeing them that they, they bond together. Like a lot of these people won't see each other all throughout the year and when they get here it's like they just saw them yesterday. No, you guys are fine in here. We got all four of y'all in here, right? Here these kids become buddies for life. They know exactly what the other is going through. And by encouraging each other to try new and sometimes scary things, like riding the zip line, horseback riding, or rock climbing, they push each other in overcoming some of life's more difficult steps. And in doing so, together they reach a new level of confidence. We hear about it too. We get to hear from parents who say, you know, uh, that their child's doing so much better in school or isn't afraid to wear short sleeves or go swimming now with their friends or... Bobby St. John went to a burn camp as a kid. Today, he's the camp director and one of dozens of firefighters, EMTs and nurses who volunteer as counselors every year. To these everyday heroes, these children are their inspiration. What they probably teach me would be the strength of the human spirit. I would. It's amazing how strong people can be, how courageous, and that's why it's called Camp Courage, for a reason. We had the kids vote one year about what they wanted to name camp, instead of just calling it, you know, Burn Camp, and no one wanted to change it after that, because it really says, says it all, so they're pretty amazing. Danielle and Dylan have been coming to Camp Courage for the past seven years, and Danielle says she'll keep coming back, because it's hard to let go. What do you think you want to be when you grow up? Well, before I'm in high school, like kind of, I'm almost in high school, I'm going to be a counselor here. Why do you want to be a counselor? Because you don't want to give up, give a camp up yet. And it's giving up camp and saying goodbye till next summer that's most difficult for both campers and counselors. I get choked up because I want to miss the kids a lot. I mean, I give a part of myself, like I said, and they give a part of themselves to me. And they... And it's hard to see them leave because you don't want to leave. You don't want to end this week and get so much fun. You have so many memories, pictures, little girls and boys make necklaces for you and pillowcases. And you just don't want to leave this atmosphere because it's so, I, I can't think of the word. It's, it's just an amazing place to be. It's kind of like Disneyland without the rides.